until we start at um, at one o'clock. So I'm just checking in while we wait for everyone to join us. And I think it's probably a little bit windy on top of the hill here. So we'll be uh, we'll be moving up the hill once we get started. So while we're waiting, just show you show you the view here. I'll uh, talk a bit about that view bit later on so just waiting waiting for one o'clock um we've got a bit of a trouble with the wind today that's probably not something a lot of people like to admit to uh, so we've got all our here to stop me being quite so muffled in the wind but it's a bit of a challenge when we get these windy days so hello if you just if you just joined us so we're just uh, counting down to one o'clock. So I can see we've got um, Wendy and Kim and Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie from Wisconsin. Hello, Bonnie. And Melanie, all the way from Cape Cod in Massachusetts. I can't even say that. <laughs> Melanie, hello. So um, one o'clock. the northern fells of Cumbria so you might be able to make that out right on the horizon not the landmass closest to us and we're just right here on the Solway the so Solway then um, turns into the Irish Sea uh, this is the River Dee that you can see the water is sparkling that runs out uh, that runs down to Cathedra so if we were to go down to sail down there we would meet the harbour town of Kirkubri where we've got some uh, fishing vessels there, fishing for langoustine and scallops. Hi Fiona, Virginia and Brian, thank you for joining us. So yes we've got um, hello from Nantwich, so it's nice to see some family joining us as well. Uh, and Rona, hello to you. So yeah if you've just joined us we've got on the far horizon we've got the northern northern fells of the Lake District so uh, we're looking directly but we've not got a lot between us and the sea. Somebody once told me you don't get a view without the wind, which is probably true. Uh, hi Russell, Melanie, Alan, hello to Wendy. So we've got here, you've just caught me hold of training. So we've got here uh, Rick and Nubian, who are two of our alpacas. And for obvious reasons, we've not been trekking. Hi Richard. Um, so we've not been trekking for the last year pretty much because of uh, the old virus so we're just doing starting out with a bit of halter training these guys are halter trained um, but they're a little bit out of practice so this is Nubian here and then we've got Rick next to him enjoying, enjoying a bite of grass here hi to Roz and William Erica Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, we love them. They're, lo they're lovely animals. So we are, we are doing alpaca trekking from the farm. So under our Samson and Senec umbrella, if you like, we do Senec alpaca trekking. So you can uh, take these guys and their pals for a walk around the farm. Um, it might be windy, <laughs> but we can put up with a little bit of wind if it's lovely weather. So I'm going to walk these guys back down to the shed. Quite nicely. At the moment, um, 
the alpacas are in with our sheep that are lambing because we've had some inclement weather and they uh, really like their home comfort so they like to be indoors on the straw so we're just going to grab one of them so that we can walk them back down into the shed so saying we've not been out for quite a while trekking they're doing pretty well Dylan will probably just uh, stay out there for a little bit longer that's fine oh, we're just going through the gate which is why my camera handling skills might be a little bit so here they are walking backwards when I take the alpacas trekking we often do a lot of backward walking so that we can get them going so I was saying they were doing really well and uh, we've put the brakes on oh, there we go hi to Pamela and Sonia Melanie so you see these bags here uh, they're all bags of plastic we uh, silage, bale, ro rolled silage, bales of silage throughout the, the winter. Uh, we save all the plastic, we bag it up and that goes to a recycling centre uh, locally near Dumfries where it gets recycled and made into other products. Some of them we have on the farm so we have uh, some recycled picnic tables and benches that our trekkers can uh, enjoy after a trek. And we also have uh, some sheep pens as well that's made out of the plastic. So it's all very sustainable. Walk on, walk on. There you go. Now we've come back into the lambing shed. So hopefully you get a better, better audio now around the wind. So I'm just going to let these guys, guys off. Uh, so we were here a week ago in the lambing shed. And if you joined us then... I think I probably told you that we were almost at the end of lambing our first batch. So we start lambing 750 ewes. Hello, hello to Oklahoma and Wisconsin. It's great for you to join us. Uh, hi, Richard, there as well. So, yeah, we have 750 ewes to lamb this season. And we started at the end of February and we'll carry on um, well, into, well into May. And we'll probably end up with a few still lambing beyond that, to be honest. So our indoor lambers here have nearly finished. So all these girls in here, they're in the mixer pen with their lambs. And they'll be going out very soon out to field. See the lambs skipping about. Happy wee lambs. They enjoy a bit of sunshine, so they like to go and lay in the sunshine. So just keeping an eye on the weather. Thursday doesn't look great. So we uh, look at the weather and see what it's doing as to whether we, we're going to turn them out. But you can see it looks pretty empty. So the rest of our alpacas. So they're just enjoying this sort of five-star winter treatment in the shed. And here we've got the last of our ewes, our indoor ewes here, to lamb. So we've got um, six, six left to lamb. I was hoping they were crossing their legs, uh, waiting for us for today but uh, there's not a lot of action in the shed right now I'm afraid so hey there to, to Bonnie and to Alan so you can see when we're looking to see whether the sheep's close to lambing uh, you can see this lady here she has got a huge udder so we would say that she dropped her milk so you know she's dropped her milk she's ready to, to lamb but there's no other indication right now that she's going to have these lambs anytime um, very soon. Anyway, we know she's expecting a single because she's got a green mark. It's nearly rubbed off now, but she's got a green mark. So we scan, scan all our ewes to see how many they are expecting, how many lambs are expecting. And that means we can manage, manage the ewes better. So um, a, a ewe like this who's expecting a single, she doesn't need as much food as a triplet. So if we fed her lots and lots of, of, of ewe rolls and we gave her lots of extra food, we'd end up with a really big lamb which would be in danger of getting stuck. So that's not what we want. We want a nice, easy birth. So she'll, she's been um, eating haylage and, and a ewe roll ration while she's been inside. Whereas her counterparts who had threes, they came inside a lot sooner and they were getting a bigger ration. 
We're keeping a really close eye on her because um, she's looking quite big. She's, we've been waiting for her to lamb for ages and she's still not lambed. So the chances are it might be quite big. Also, hello Aberdeen. Uh, it's snowing in Aberdeen and, and Minnesota. Uh, so this is a Texel cross sheep, this one here. So she's quite wee, but she'll give us um, a nice shapey lamb. So the dad will be a charolate up. And so that'll give us a nice shapey lamb that'll, that'll grow quite quickly. There's another single there. Of course, the chances are when you've been watching them for lambing, they end up lambing when you've gone in for a brew or something. So you go in for, for a cup of tea and you come back out and they've lambed, uh, which is fine as long as she gets them out nice and nice and easy. So hi to, to Joan and to Clive. Uh, this, this lady here is a Suffolk, a Suffolk cross. So we have a few Suffolk crosses on the farm. And then if we swing round, uh, we've got our mothering up hens. So we've got 566 six here. Um, when we get up to these big numbers, we've not lambed 566 ewes. What happens in the middle of the night is you forget what number you got up to. And so you think, oh gosh, we were on like four something. I'll have to start again at five so we don't end up doubling up. Now the, the lady next door here, you can see she's got a harness on. Uh, and that is because she has, she's had a little prolapse and so she's just got that harness on to make sure that everything stays in place uh, and settles down after she's given birth. She's quite a small sheep, so she had a decent sized lamb um, and hopefully that will settle down and, and will be good. It's just a precaution to make sure that, um, that everything is, is well. Around to the other mothering up hens here so this girl is 10 and she's got a purple number and that's because um this is the next batch so this is a mule this is a scotch mule and she lambed outside uh but we just brought her in we were just checking that she'd got enough milk and she's just turned a mothering up hen till we are happy that um that all is well so we're back at we're back down in the low numbers here different colored spray marker can't tell you how much spray marker you go through when you're lambing quite a lot so again another mule that, that lambed outside she lambed outside late on last night so we brought her in with the weather being a little bit colder and then we'll move these on to a different field so our scotch mules they'll go to a different field than our early lambers and we run them as two different flocks until later on in the year when the lambs are weaned and then all the ewes go back together until tupping time. Tupping time is when we put the rams in um, back next autumn. So it's a, it's a yearly cycle. Everything we do is based on the season and the weather. So we'll leave these, these guys. And what we're going to do is that we're going to have a little wander down the field. So I'm just opening the door. Oh, you might hear that. I'm a little bit jittery, that's what I'm doing, opening the door. And then closing it again. And what I'll do is swing around Oops. to see. There you go. So if you didn't see me last week, here I am. <laughs> so we're just, just bobbing down, down into the yard. Before we get uh, down into the field, we've got some sheep in the pens today. So bear with me and we'll turn you around. So these are our sheep pens. So this is the last batch that we're going to be lambing. So they've just come in from the field um, about five minutes ago. Just, be, just while I was doing this, we've got our vet students here and they brought these in. These were scanned uh, last week. So you can see really nice bright marks on their bottoms to show uh, blue is a pair, green is a single, reds are triplets. So what we're gonna be doing today now is that uh, the triplets out here are going to be drawn off. So by that, I mean they're gonna run down the race and then we're going to put them in one pen, the triplets, and they'll go into the shed because they need extra food and extra care and attention. So these will be lambing in about three weeks time, they'll start. And the pairs and the singles will go back out to field for now. But these are our younger sheep, so we call them our shearlings. So they've had, they've been sheared once. So these girls 
will um, be having their first lambs and just like all first time mums they're a little bit unsure of what to do um, sometimes well quite often they um, have their lamb and then they run away because they're not quite sure what it is that they've had so we like to lamb these inside even though the weather will hopefully by by then by the towards the end of April it'll be better um, but if we lamb them inside it means that we can keep a closer eye on them and it's a really good tool for management um, and with a few a few Shetlands, Shetland sheep in here as well um, from an older flock that we had and so they're a wee bit older um, and we're, we're lambing them a little bit later their lambs will take longer to grow on so we'll, we'll just let them grow on into next year so back on to me so we're going to walk through the yard here and hopefully you can hear me because it's a really windy day I know some places it's snowing today isn't it so we're quite lucky we haven't got any snow um, as we go past here just to uh, show you our our two bulls here behind me so we've got ginger nut who is um, a Shetland bull so we have a small herd of rare breed Shetland cattle and we sell Shetland beef from the farm so the big the big guy there is ginger nut because he's got a ginger a ginger head and then we have a young bull uh, called pronto who is next to him um, and he is um, a blonde aquitaine bull so they overwinter in a bull pen in the yard um, because it, it means they become they're less bored because they can see what's going on it means every day we are um, we can give their head a scratch, we're feeding them some nuts, some, some um, concentrate um, so that they get to know us and it just keeps our bulls quiet and it keeps them knowing who we are and easier to handle. So in here down to, where, down to the field in front of the house where we have our mules so you can see what they look like in the field I'm hoping you can hear me apologies it's a little bit windy so I'm gonna open this gate and turn you back round it's me opening the gate you can probably hear it so here we've got our scotch mules uh, the grass is starting to grow so they're not really eating the haylage very much but you can see we feed them haylage on this platform here Hi Amy. Um, so we scrape all this off and, and keeps it nice and clean. And you can see that unlike the sheep in the shed that didn't really run away from me, um, these mules are a little bit wilder. So different breeds have uh, different temperaments, and they're you know they're a bit wilder because um, their mothers, the Scotch mules, their mothers are black. And yeah, they have to have their wits about them because they're out there in the wild. Um, and yeah, they have to be tough. They're tough sheep. Uh, and that, that runs through their daughters into these Scotch mules. And um, the father would be uh, a Leicester Tup ram. So you get the hardiness and the mother ability from the black faced ewe, and you get the um, some of the other qualities of milkiness from hopefully from the other side so it's a beautiful day now the sun's come out maybe the wind's dropped i don't want to talk too soon so these are lambing now outside we are feeding them u rolls once a day and we'll come around with the bike and we'll pick up any lambs that have been born we don't keep them in here because we want to know when we've got new lambs so if we if we've left them in here not only would we run out of grass uh, but also we wouldn't be able to tell instantly as we walked around what is newborn so no doubt nobody's going to indulge me by <laughs> by having just had a lamb <laughs> so it's nice of everybody to join us today so we've got uh, Brenda there as well, hello, Clive. So you see, they're just sort of grazing away. Everyone's in 
tip top shape just before lambing. You can see the sort of land we have here. So we're on, on rock here in Borg. So the only thing we can grow to any effect is grass. So since it's sustainable farming, we can go grow grass, sheep eat grass, turn that protein into protein that we can use. Hi Brenda, Roger. So I'm just walking me uh, where I planted a bucket of sheep. We want to say hello to the sheep that we want to go to the farm with them. So from the first batch the lambs go down to the other end of the farm and they gradually work their way back up to the farmyard. So when the lambs are big enough for their jag, so just like our children they have to have some some jags. Um, when they're old enough for the, their jags, they're just um, close to the farm and easy to run in. But this is what we call the granny field. Hi body. So the granny field um, is a field in which we've got our older ewes that have had lambs. So they're ewes that uh, we want to just give a little bit of extra food to and keep a little bit of an eye on. Hi from Blair Gary. Hello to Olivia as well. So because my husband normally comes down and feeds them, uh, they're not getting excited by me. <laughs> There's also plenty of grass in here. So they're not uh, so interested in the food right now. how quickly they're growing now out here all this grass oh, I'm going to put some units around for them it's quite hard to see the, the old selfie stick you can see here we come so this is number 10 so that were born at the start of March. Oh, hello, yeah, it's a nice health and foot folker. Can have a card. It's a nice sunny, sunny day here too when, the, when uh, the sun comes out. So, see so here they all come now. I just realized that there's some food. There's some food on the go. So we don't have very many sheep in this field. So uh, if you just joined us, um, we sort of call this our granny field. And it's where we put the older ewes so they can get a little bit more food and we can just keep a closer a closer eye on them and you can see uh, that the lambs are growing well everyone looks happy and healthy the rest of the ewes and lambs from our first batch are further down down the farm and we walk them or we bike around them twice a day to check that everything's okay down there as well but because these are a little closer to the house and to the farmstead and if I show you the farmstead in there um, so you can see that uh, we can keep a bit of a closer eye on so there we go I'm not sure of the time I'm not sure where I'm up to the time disappears on when you're when you're filming this So 
a girl, uh, new here that's got a red mark so she had a triplet but we yeah uh, we've turned around with a pair and one of her triplets went on to um, got a new mummy who had just got a single lamb and so we gave her an extra lamb so we turned out two pairs instead of a pair and a triplet or a single and a triplet so this is grand this is what we love it's so nice when you come down here and you walk around your ewes and lambs and you can see that uh, the culmination of a year's work everyone's happy and munching away um, is really what you want to be seeing you can see how these uh, these lambs are really starting to shape up now there's uh, quite a mixture of ages in here because this is where we we're putting those older ewes real tight eye on because we might want to bring them back in so yeah, there's a yellow, there's a bucket, so we've got to have our heads in the bucket. It's a typical sheepy thing, that. So. There they all are. Lots of grass here. Our grass starts growing quite early here, just on the coast. So that's why we're lambing earlier. So you'll find as the lambathon goes on, you'll be heading England will have been lambing you know, from, from January onwards. So with farming, it's all to do with the seasons. Doesn't matter what, you know, lots of new technology, lots of things that can improve and help, but essentially um, nothing really changes in terms of the patterns, the patterns of the seasons, the weather. They're the things that really drive, drive our year and tell us what's going to happen when so we listen to the weather and we listen to the seasons and and get a feel for what what's going on and what's what so these little lambs it's a sort of now they're shouting for their mum our mum's gone for some food so we're just going to sort of say mum where are you what are you doing now on the grass are looking at me like I've got a bit nuts. Who's that? So most of these lambs and um, their dad is a Charolais, a Charolais ram or a tup. Um, they're easy, easy um, birth. So see they have this sort of narrow shaped head so they're quite easy to lamb and then they'll muscle up as they get bigger. So they have quite big sort of bigger bottoms and so sort of quite lengthy. Oh, lambs are cute, Melanie, aren't they? <laughs> so, it's one, two, one. So again, apologies if the wind has been a little bit annoying. Thank you for sticking with me because uh, it is really windy here. If you were here at the start, I'll turn you back round. If you were here at the start, um, you'll know that there's not a lot between us here and the sea. So the wind comes straight at us and um, you know, when it's blowing a gale, it really needs it. Uh, not so bad on the day today though, when the sun, the sun is out and it's really lovely. If you've just joined us sort of towards the end here, so we're on the southwest coast of Scotland just on the Solway so we're farming along just along from the River Dee which runs out of Kibri and joins the Solway the Solway joins the Irish Sea so a clear day we can see the Isle of Man Uh, yeah, we also get that wind. So, yep, sunny Kikubri, that's right. It's a beautiful harbour town. So we're five miles away from the town of Kikubri. So famous as well for the Glasgow girl, the Glasgow boy, the artist. Oh. So I'm just going to go back to 
through the gate. I'm thinking it's really hard, it's like a wind tunnel. I'm trying to think which way I can get out of the wind, but it's everywhere. I'm in now, so these are our outdoor lamin, and then when we finished, when we finished outdoor lamin, then um, we go back indoors for the very, the very end, and uh, our shearlings, those, those uh, sheep that we saw in the pens, which are first-time mums. We also have a few pedigree and pure sheep as well that we lamb right at the end because uh, we're breeding so 100 or so of those that we're breeding for replacement. Hi Eric and Dalbiti. Uh, so those, are, those replacement lambs, um, they're not for the market, they're not for the food chain so we don't need to to fatten them up, they don't need to grow quickly so our pures and pedigrees we lamb last and they'll just slowly grow on into next year. We don't lamb lambs as lambs if that makes sense. Uh, that's hard work. We like to let them grow on a year. So you can see these mules. This one here. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh thank you Olivia. You see this uh, lady here she's got a red bottom. So when the, the ram when the tup went in with the ewes he had some red paint on him. Um, and so we know that she should be one of the first to lamb unless she didn't hold in lamb and she went round to another cycle so when we're looking round we're looking for these sort of red bottoms so we know who's up next so I'm thinking I must be near to half past half past one I don't know if somebody could time check me that would be really good because I've not brought my huge alarm clock out with me <laughs> that I had, I had in the shed last week but we'll just uh, wish you round so I think, I think I must be there I think we must be at half past one. Oh, thank you David <laughs> oh I must have a really good natural clock because that was spot on then wasn't it so I'll leave you with some views of the lambing field, it's half one. So enjoy the rest of the day. You can just see come into view our holiday accommodation. We don't have 4G down there, so I couldn't take you around it, but you can just see it poking, poking out there. Thank you very much for, for watching. I really enjoy doing these. You've been brilliant. Thank you so much. Hopefully it's sunny where you are. If it's snowing, um, hopefully you can stay warm indoors. And there you go, beautiful Bonnie Galloway. Thank you so much. <laughs>